Hola compañeros. Welcome back to my home in, in Glendale, California. Um, and to my Galeria Grasquache. And this is Adalisa Sosa Riddell, um, formerly a professor at UC Davis, currently abiding in, in Glendale, California, and having a good time in Southern California. Thank you for your attention and thank you for coming and listening to my ramblings. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, you can, if you have questions, you can always email me or Twitter to Twitter me, <laughs> uh, and I could see if I could answer some of your questions. My name uh, is well. I'm sorry, I gave you the name already. He's a social media, and um, I'm using this social media because I think it, it's been very useful to other people's. Uh, it has flexed its muscle across the world, uh, and it is very po potent. It has, shows much potential, and we would like to, to use it. I would like to use it for sh democratizing the system, uh, the American political system. It, not just it's not just useful in other countries, but in the United States as well. I'm a political junkie, as you can tell. Uh, that is to say, I'm a I have a political science degree, uh, PhD, so of course I'm a junkie. And we, are, we as, as, a, as a experts or academics are interested in um, everything that's political, knowing we want to know what, why, but more than anything we love to, to, to um, manage things, we like to micromanage, we like to rule and show you how to do things well in a democracy. Um, and we like to predict, and we also like to be right. So I consider this project that well, we've been talking about, Latina for, for governor, elected Latina for governor in, in the year 2014, that I consider an experiment in democracy. And it is a, um, a project, it may be a very good experiment or a very good study for, for more people who want to go into PhDs. But uh, it will make a good action as well. Uh, and so, so it, even though it's important to me that it be a good, ex, good ex, experiment, it's more important that it be a good action and it could actually work. And I think it's, the purpose for that would be that we, we have a, a political system that's so-called so -called democratic, but it's out of control. And it's not useful, it's not having to, to apply it usefully to a large number of people disenfranchising a lot of people, a, lot, a good number of people, a large number of people. And so we are living today in a broken system. Democracy covers, the word covers every political system from one person dictatorships to benevolent monarchies and all these are called democracies. Everybody wants to claim they are a, democ a democracy. Everybody puts na democracy in front of their names. So, so now it has come to have no meaning or little or no meaning. There's three, I think there are three important factors that are out of control, particularly for those of us uh, who are um, disenfranchised over time, and in particular I, by that category, I, include, I mean Latinos. Other categories are also included in that, in that uh, situation of, of living within a broken down system. The, uh, the other factor that's very much a problem is the two-party system. Uh, and the people at the grassroots feel that they cannot reach the parties. They're, they are close to them. And we witnessed all that this summer particularly. I think this summer was probably the highlight of, um, of, of a control situation in which no matter what we tried to do, people tried to do, nothing could penetrate the orchestrated manners in which the, the campaign was run. The other place where the system is out of control is in money, in terms of money. Increasingly over the decades that we've been here in this century, in the last century, and now it's starting in the 21st century, we have lost any effort of bringing, bringing ideas into the campaign that are not supported by somebody with big money. And we spell that money with an M, a capital M-O-N-E-Y. And it has a very com complete control of other people. What is the role then of the people? Yourself, myself, what's our role? To just um, cheerleaders, be cheerleaders? 
And that's been very dissatisfactory to almost all of us. Um, so I thought of um, the idea of electing a Latina as a governor of California in 2014. It's an opportunity. It's symbolic, yes. And it will get, get mixed up with party politics, but, but we can try to go work around that. Uh, so it is an um, opportunity to organize people outside the politically uh, organized two-party system, the current two-party system. Uh, and so before you, but before you get too upset with the two parties, we might, my uh, treatment of the two-party system, take a, good, take a good look and ask yourself why there's so many times we want to do things, other things outside the party system. And it will be an opportunity for us to reduce a tight hold on, on the elections with, because of money. Uh, it, it's, a chair, it's, a, it's a very, um, almost embar an embarrassment to think of ourselves as, as selling ourselves or, or buying our votes. An example, this summer, uh, Mitt Romney, for, uh, when he was running for president, he spent $992 million on advertising. And 60 million people voted for him. Because there's a lot more people, a lot more money went into him, in, into the, from him to the campaign than uh, the number of people who voted for him. So now what we're doing is spending a lot of money and, and for not winning a campaign. Now, is that helpful? Is that helping us? Is that make us more democratic? I think the answer is no. So I, I think that the system of democrat and democracy that we see in the United States has failed some, in some very critical areas, in, in addition to the ones we just, have just discussed. They fail to, we have failed to address gender issues, issues of sexuality. We have failed to address the whole concept of institutional racism. We don't want to admit that we have to live in this system of institutional racism. We don't want to acknowledge the problems of the, of the criminal justice system. We see them all the time in the news, but we don't want to acknowledge them individually. And then there's the whole idea of the Tea Party um, and independents and other groups that they, they, do not, they oppose tax, taxation. Well, I suppose everybody opposes taxation. But don't forget the last part of taxation. The cry of the Boston Tea Party was not taxation, no taxation. It was no taxation without representation. So what we're feeling right now, I think, is that we're not getting represented even though we have all these elections. And so then it's hard to, be, to, to accept and be comfortable with taxation. Um, so remember, try to remember, taxation without representation is what we're concerned about, not just taxation, which is what the Tea Party people seem to be concerned about. Um, we need to, con to get back to, to basics. And so let me just conclude with a few ideas uh, to, to give you a little more rationale and more, more um, animo for um, taking on this task of trying to get a, a, a working hard, not just trying to get a Latina elected to, to a governorship of the state of California um, as soon as possible. And that would be 2014. It would be an opportunity to, to demonstrate how our the system works, maybe we can make it work. Maybe we can make people feel that they're being represented. If we can do that, we would be achieving something for all of us, the whole state, maybe the whole nation. Um, it would be an opportunity for us to show our political um, knowledge and our political muscle. And it would be important for us to be able to show how available people power is. We can go beyond super PACs and um, take people's work, and their work would be meaning, meaningful. I wanted to quote uh, an, uh, an, um, a person who was talking about California, and it has nothing to do with politics, seemingly. But yet, I think he tells us something about how we are viewed by other, other states around the United States and other countries, and so I think we need to show that we live up to those kinds of, of, um, of uh, ideas and visions of our California as a really good place to live. This is from a, a person that's called Stem, Dr. Stem Cell. And he writes, people always tell me, you've got the best job in the world. How did California do this? That the, he is a director of a, a California Research Institute on Regenerative Medicine. And, <clears throat> well, he says, California is a can-do place. 
And when they want something, they stand up and do it. Many of my colleagues want to come to California. It's just a wonderful place. You could sail it off the, the coast of, of America, and it would be the most wonderful country, country in the world. Thank you. So, bye. See you next time.